Before we get into the checks, remember to like this video if you find it useful and subscribe if you like our content. It really does help us out. If the calipers are off, then the brake could rub, making riding very hard work, or you'll just get one side of the brake contacting the rim or the rotor first, which is where imbalanced braking starts. Starting with rim brakes, this one is a simple fix. You're going to need an Allen key, in this case a 5mm. We pop it into the back side of the brake where the fastening nut is, loosen it off until the brake can freely move, and then pull the brake on. This centers it, and keeping hold of the brake lever as firmly as possible, you can retighten the nut. Give the brake a few quick squeezes. You're listening for this sound. For disc brakes, the procedure is very similar. I've switched to a 4mm Allen key, and I'm going to go for a ball end as the access down here is a little tight. Loosen the caliper bolt so that the caliper can move. Then I like to give the wheel a spin and jam the brake on, holding it. I'm going to tighten the bolt closest to the hose first. In this case, the top one. And once it is firmly tightened, I'm going to test the alignment by spinning the wheel. Blissful silence is what we're looking for here. If we have it, then tighten the other bolt down and give things one final spin to check that we're still getting silence. That's it for caliper alignment. All other things being well, you should have perfectly working brakes. Both rim and disc brakes do wear down over time and checking for excessive wear will prolong the life of your kit, ensure that your brakes work quietly and crucially effectively. Again, we'll start with rim brakes. Here we need to check that the pads have life left in them firstly, but also that they're free from debris and not glazed over. The wear on the pad can be seen via a wear indication line. You might have to clean the pad to view this line because brake dust, honestly, it gets everywhere. Uh, but you're definitely working on a perfectly clean bike, aren't you? Yes, good. Uh, if not, just a wet wipe or wet rag, that should do the trick. Once you've located the line, ensure that there is plenty of pad left. If you're getting close, down to about two millimeters left before the wear mark, it's time to buy new pads ready to replace them. If the wear line is gone already or your pads are down to near the brake shoe, you need to replace them urgently. It's a simple case of undoing this bolt, sliding out the old pad and sliding the new one back in. The pads will have left and right printed on them with a directional arrow. Just follow the direction of the wheel. If your pads have plenty of life left, check them for bits of debris that may have become lodged in the compound. If you've got alloy rims, then this is a common occurrence. Just flick anything you find out with a pick or a knife. You don't want it in there because it will eat into the brake surface of your rims. And finally, check for glazing. This is caused by constant heat cycles, which can't be avoided, so it's completely normal. Take a file or some sandpaper and take the glaze layer off. For disc pads, you're really just looking to see that there is enough pad left. You really don't want to get down to bare metal. That will sound horrendous and it will be very dangerous too. The rough rule is any pad under one millimeter thick needs to be replaced. Digital verniers or a simple tape measure will do the job. You can take the glazing off the pad, again, using sandpaper or a file. Just be careful to keep the pad surface flat. If your rim brakes are making a bit of noise or you feel like you're not getting the most power from them, towing the pad in can really help. This makes the front of the pad hit the brake surface first, but we need to kick the rear of the pad out by about one millimeter. It's a simple case of folding a bus ticket or a business card, sliding it in behind the back edge of the brake pad, and then pulling the brake on to hold everything in place. You need to undo the brake shoe bolt here and then nip it back up. That should angle the pad inwards just enough. Don't forget to do the other side too. For me, cable run optimization has always been one of the most important factors when setting up my brakes, as for a long time, I used cantilever brakes on my cyclocross bike, and they really needed perfect length cables to create as little resistance as possible. 
What we need to do is to give enough cable housing to allow the handlebars to turn freely while also creating the smoothest line possible from the hood to the brake. We also need to avoid really tight bends and also make sure that the ends of the housing are free from obstructions. Simply go along the length of each brake's housing and check for very tight bends and kinks. If you have any and your brakes are heavy at the lever, consider replacing the housing and the inner because that will be bent too. Being able to access your brake levers from both the hoods and the drops is really important for safety. So one thing to check is your brake lever position. At the lever, depending on which levers you have, there should be a reach adjustment screw, which you can access by rolling the hood back. You might want to test this with the bike on the ground as the angle of your wrist and hand will have changed from where it was on the stand. If you do wind your levers in, you'll need to check that the lever doesn't now contact the handlebar when you start braking. If it does, the brake won't generate all of its potential power, so we need to remove some of the lever movement that happens before the pads contact the rim. First off, what you do depends on the shifters that you're working on. With the Ultegra R8750 Di2 disc shifters that I have here, there's a little screw under here. Turning it clockwise will increase the free stroke and counterclockwise will decrease it. I like my brakes to engage with a very small pull on the lever, so I'll do a bit of turning counterclockwise. For rim brakes, we can set the pads closer to the rim by either unwinding the barrel adjuster or resetting the anchor bolt with the pads closer to the rim. Disc brake rotors can warp through excessive heat and they will eventually wear out too. So checking your rotors from time to time is very sensible. If the rotor is warped, you'll see it when you spin the wheel and look down through the brake caliper. That movement could also be causing the rotor to rub against the pads, which you'll hear, and that's just plain annoying. A rotor truing tool can be used to straighten a bent rotor. You need to find out where the rotor is out of line and then there's no pretty way of doing this, uh, just bend it back into shape. If you find that you are constantly warping rotors, then changing to a larger size is a great idea. Don't worry about weight, the difference is honestly minimal. Rotors like brake pads also need changing when they get too thin. Most rotors have their minimum thickness printed on the side, so just as with disc brake pads, I'm going to reach for the digital verniers or a tape measure to check the thickness of my rotors. If they get below the minimum thickness, it is absolutely time to replace them with a new set. There are our six checks to make on your brakes. If you've got a check that you make, then pop it in the comments below as it might just help someone else. If you like this video, then drop us a like and subscribe to see more from us. Thank you very much for watching.